Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batis understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at the sphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. What's up, good people? Welcome back to another episode of Technocrats, where we talk about the ins and outs of technology to empower the digital you. I'm your host, Gary Lee, also known as G Hawkins. Of course, you can find me anywhere online, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snappity Chat, at G Hawkins. That's G Hawkins with a Z, and I'm sitting with my main man, Jay. Jay, what's up, bro? How you feeling today? Oh, feeling pretty good, man. Looking forward to uh, another exciting episode of Technocrats. It looks like your backdrop has changed a little bit, brother. You <laughs> yeah. Look, you're looking a little different <laughs> over there. Changed. What's going on? <laughs> something has changed. Yeah, something. Just, uh, just a little, a little something. different. Yeah. A little different. Can, a our, little audience, different. can our viewers tell, see what it is? Uh, I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> So, yeah, we're in different spots right now, but that's okay for those that are watching, for those that are audio only. You don't even know. So it's all good. We're It's, it's business as usual here in Technocrats because this is what we do to provide you with the best outlook for the technology that's happening today so you can make the best decisions for tomorrow. So without further ado, let's hop right in. Am I right? So yes. Sprint, shall I say, Sprint is getting a big, the big uh, lawsuit over making sure that Radio Shack doesn't come back up. Jay, what's going on with this, man? Oh, yeah. Well, as we probably can remember recently, um, we heard the bad news about uh, Radio Shack having to close its doors, and then they tried to come with an online presence. And it's kind of similar to what Circuit City had to do, uh, unfortunately, RIP Circuit City. Yet, uh, but one of the things that Radio Shack had before they had to close the doors, they had a great partnership, an exclusive partnership with Sprint uh, for their phones um, and handsets there and hotspots. And one of the things, uh, once they, even though they, they filed bankruptcy, but they tried to make a comeback and to do some restructuring within the organization, they felt that this partnership with Sprint would be what they need, you know, to help them get back up and in the masses and and be able to um, get a good footing again. But one of the things that uh, happened uh, in this period of time from 2015 onward was that, yeah, they did partner together, and, but the, the strategic information from the field, <laughs> Sprint utilized those, that polling and that data to, <laughs> to find the areas that's best for them to uh, put their own stores at. Man, and they look. did it before, <laughs> before uh, Radio Shack could do so. I, how do you the 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 effery the the backhandedness of sprint man um it is it's such a sad situation am i right jay yeah i mean because this it okay first of all i mean yeah it's a bad situation because a lot of us grew up going to radio shack as the go-to place to get those weird batteries that you couldn't get nowhere else mm -hmm. um they had some of the i was not the weird batteries but they had some of the the weird type of cable connections that you needed for electronic devices and they would be the store that had them now they had bad customer service i have to say overall but they were the go-to place when you couldn't find something anywhere else but i feel like this is very cruel for a sprint to do this because this just 
deflated every effort of Radio Shack to ever come back by them going ahead and building their stores in the locations uh, right across or adjacent to um, the radio Sprint Partnership store. And it gave no one any reason outside of regular foot traffic to come into Radio Shack's store because now it's actually go to the silo store or Sprint. I have no reason to go to Radio Shack, and mm-hmm. I can surf online. So this caused them to get this lawsuit, which is, I believe, $500 million, or upwards of $500 million. Whew. And um, – I don't know. Do, do Radio Shack really have a case or not? But it's sad to see these electronic stores go because I liked and enjoyed going to the brick and mortar stores. I I like having Circuit City to go against the Best Buy. Yeah. And competition. And, you know, yeah. It, it does something for. It does. I think it does something well for uh, consumers, right? Yes. So at the end of the day, when you have businesses that are are competing, especially technology based businesses, the consumers are the one to benefit from it. So prices go down. Uh, opportunities go up, technology continues to increase because there's always this constant pressure. And I remember looking for, trying to go to the Radio Shack like a week ago, <laughs> and it was closed. I was like, because I needed something particular, and yes. I ended up having to order it from Amazon. So yeah, it's, yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. one of those things. Right. So, it- but I, I feel you. Uh, I think they have a case, man. Um, I think that from a technology perspective, we're going to miss um, what Radio Shack brings. Um, because now it's either a Best Buy, which which won't have those nah, niche th- devices, nah, so which won't. means you didn't have to go to Fry's or somewhere like that in, yeah. in, in down here in the South. Um, but, man, oh, man, for Sprint to do what they did and open up sh- shops n- nearby <laughs> when they were doing well, like, that's crazy. That, yes. that, that undermines your whole partnership. So. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, f- uh, ethics, man. I yeah. Tell you, business ethics. Bro. Business ethics at, at its worst. Um, how, what, what do you think would be the... Um, I guess, do you for, still foresee a need, though, for Radio Shack? Do you think even if they do come back, will they play a strong enough place in society today to keep them afloat, even if they win this lawsuit? Well, I kind of want Radio Shack to remain. I just want them to change up their, uh, their overall business strategy and some of the, the, the customer experience. But like I said, they had those niche items that we need, especially those who are technocrats, you know, buy certain things or trying to fix things yourself. Um, but I think if they come back, I would like to see them focus again on the robotics, uh, like science kits and things they had, the market control cars, RC drone, drone parts, car, yeah, drone parts, things like that, and other type of chemistry sets and things like that for kids. I think that would be great. If they can partner with, a, uh, with academia some type of way mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. to be a place you can go to that you, you can go buy something that same day and at an instant without having to wait, wait on a two day delivery from Prime, Amazon Prime. So and, and sometimes you just want to see something in the store and you like the demos. And, and it's an experience, too, if you have a child or a kid or you take a niece or nephew with you and you want to take them somewhere and you buy them something to do, a, a nice little science kit or something. I think I, the experience overall was better for me to be able to go in the store and rather than just order it online. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I, I definitely don't disagree. Um, I'm, I'm, we'll, we shall see what happens. Yes. Because when money talks, you know, that, yeah. that's just one of those things. So uh, moving along, something really, really interesting. Um, it looks like scientists have produced uh, dialysis membranes made from graphene. Now, obviously, this, this material um, that, that filters molecules at this high rate is something that it's going to be very beneficial for a lot of people, a lot of individuals. Um, I'm not, I'm not convinced that we are using graphene enough. Mm. So when I see things like this, this gives me hopes and dreams to, to have more products to have more polymerization, things that are happening based on these chemical compounds that we are creating that will sew back into health technology, sciences, things like that. How do you feel about this? Yeah, I feel like what MIT uh, research engineers are doing is great work. Uh, we we had on our last episode we had Mr. Uh, Matt Conwell, uh, uh, Matt, yeah, yeah on, on our episode, and he was sharing some zims about some of the R and D that occurs on universities uh, for research on the, at their uh, school campuses. Mm-hmm. And I know MIT is very well worldwide known, and also they get a lot of great funding uh, at their at their school. 
But the work with this graphene to use it in this way to be able to filter out um, a lot of different things, like dialysis is filtering out different things in the blood system. Mm -hmm. Many of us probably have different ones who have kidney issues in their family who have to go uh, periodically or several times throughout the week uh, to to have an artificial uh, health machine that performs this function of what the kidney normally does. Uh, But the, the, the big thing that stood out to me was the technology side. But as I start looking more in depth into the article and watching the video of what they plan on proposing with this graphene, I said, well, this really will have a great effect for those who are suffering from dialysis because uh, it can be a substitute as it's a, nan- it's a nano-sized member, one billionth of a meter, in a sense, trillion rather. They can go inside and filter out different things inside the blood. So with it being nano in size, um, it can also be charged electrically. And that means if it can be charged electrically, it can be given instruction what to do as it go into the blood to specifically know what to filter out. So it, the sky's the limit for this graphene technology. Of, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> of this right here. Yeah, that's and exactly <laughs> where I was about to go. I yeah. mean, we're talking about an opportunity for if, if being able to be charged internally in the, in the body, being able to be given an instruction set yeah. to then be able to do something significant. With, and we're, we're, we're talking filtering right now, but yeah. but – what, what is that in the future? You know, right. having it focus on particular molecules or focus on particular diseases that exist in the bloodstream to be able to go in and, and, and manipulate particular things based on the instruction sets. Right. Like to me, that's where we're headed. That's right. the that is how that's the disruption that we're looking for from technology when it starts to to really give medicine a run for its money. We right. hadn't really had those conversations yes. so heavily. Right. But when technology can come in and say, OK, well, we're going to take you off these pills we're going to take you off all of these different things that you're that you that you're ingesting that are treating the symptoms of the problem but not necessarily the problem and we're going to use technology to actually repair your body Mm. now you're fighting against medicine now you're fighting against the pharmaceutical market and you're really disrupting that that's big stuff man (laughs) it is here this is so yeah you so like you touched on nanomedicine and uh, giving a different instruction set to these things. And we, we talk about nano, whenever those who've probably seen the recent movie Transformers, mm-hmm. you see how the Transformers are able to assimilate, disassimilate, break down themselves, and be able to reform to different types of um, materials, right? Or different mm-hmm. types of um, objects in a form state um, out of different matters. So, in a sense, same thing with this nanotechnology. It can form, it can be charged and decharged. In a sense, it can form based on an instruction. So, it can become what it needs to become to carry out a certain purpose or a function. So with that being said, who knows that this nano type of this graphene uh, can't become another organ or it can't become a certain mm-hmm. filter to filter out certain diseases or deadly bacteria in the bodies. Like you mentioned, the tech, instead of having to take the medication, they give you all these side effects or never really do away with the issue. So I feel what I feel is that when these scientists and what the MIT is doing this research, and I'm pretty sure they tested on rat blood or testing other type of whatever animals that are approved to be able to use for this type of testing, I feel like they already stumbled upon it. Mm. I feel like they already stumbled upon you that this so? thing could do it already. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's already been done. But the thing is, I feel like they have to go to that person who's uh, who's there as a uh, PhD or advisor as they do these researchers research. And it's been mentioned to them not to put that into their notes mm. <laughs> or put it on side because you can't not do this with blood and not come to your mind, wait a minute, I can filter out all this bacteria and the other artifacts don't need to, components that don't need to be in here. That means I can take away disease or infection. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure they already stumbled across it. Yeah, uh, you, <laughs> you might be on to something, Jay. You just yeah. might be on to something, good sir. But let us all know what you think. Hit us up. Shoot us, shoot us an email over to technocrats at thesphere.tv. We want to know, if do you are you liking the direction that technology is going right. into the biosciences, being able to possibly make change to the human biology, um, whether, whether that's, you know... Uh, what we're talking about here through filtering blood, whether that's something about organ replacement, because we've had conversations like this before, uh, f- repairing eyesight. We've talked about a lot of things here on technology on technocrats in regards to technology coming into the biosciences. But hit us up on social media at the sphere dot uh, at the sphere TV hashtag technocrats. And while, while you're at it, we also want to make a conversation about your teeth because this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness.
So at Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We're committed to the finest possible oral care and overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and a friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Batiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make an appointment today with Dr. Chandra Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness at area code 713-789-8680. And remember, if you mention the sphere, you receive 10% off. There you so go. Make sure you make that call today. Get your teeth right, man. Yeah, yeah get, that your get, your the, right. yeah, get, get that your, shine on. Get that shine on. Exactly. Get your shine on. Get your teeth shine on. So, Moving forward into the conversations of today, um, this one uh, from our good friends over at The Verge, and they host a, a, a separate part of The Verge called Circuit Breaker, where they're obviously talking about a lot of things that are trending right now. And we like to talk about things that are digital trends as well. One of these particular articles um, that we brought out kind of resurrects a company that we hadn't had a conversation about in a very long time. Yes. And that happens to be Lenovo. Now, Lenovo has decided to bring a concept to the screen that kind of brings about, um, how do I say, something that is of science fiction, which we all know that as science fiction continues to happen, Mm -hmm. we start to see things in reality that were once in science fiction. (laughs) Um, And for those that are watching us right now, you see what, what they're calling a foldable laptop design um, that has this uh, curved technology, which I think simply looks gorgeous. Uh, to me, this is uh, this is something of the science fiction age that I expected to see a long time ago. Something that uh, when we're talking about, we've, we've had those conversations about the e-ink displays. We have the conversations about uh, wearable technologies that that that's that has the flex to it. Matter of fact, we had a conversation last week about that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Mac was talking about the fact that there are a lot of technologies that just get shelved at these universities. They get patents, but they're never acted on um, simply because of the red tape or, or the back end mm-hmm. uh, politics of things. Uh, but Lenovo is is showing something off that looks really really cool, and I'm 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 really excited to see what happens with the foldable PC with Lenovo. The hashtag is Lenovo Transform, mm. um, simply because I think the the concept is great and it it breaks the societal norms. Jay, how do you feel about this, man? I. I- what you just said at the very tail end about it breaks the society norms. Yes, exactly what Lenovo no- has been doing. And apparently, Lenovo has been doing this for quite some time since they made large acquisitions of uh, some of the sectors and divisions of, of IBM. Um, they don't do a gr- great job of marketing and tooting their own horn, so to speak, as what all their accomplishments and things and innovation uh, are. But one of the things they mentioned at this conference on the 20th in New York City is that they're making that change to do better strategic marketing uh, to show not only what they're doing on the data center side, which they had some huge announcements. And if you want to talk about that, you know, you hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or my email address and we can get into more of the data center side. But on the lamest terms of some of the things on the consumer side, um, they're doing a lot of different things uh, in technology with uh, their their foldable uh, Mac, I mean, their foldable tablets that they have mm-hmm. and also using materials that are uh, that are beautiful and it rivals uh, the Apple, uh, some of the things they are known for to be uh, for as aesthetics and different type of materials. But with this foldable uh, PC uh, laptop concept to me, I, I think it's a it's interesting um, that they are demonstrating this at this time. And I would like they didn't really touch on some of the applications and uses <laughs> for uh, what they plan on seeing this for seeing this to be at. But I'm pretty sure they have something in mind. And I was trying to think of myself now if I had a foldable laptop, what type of case would I have, or how would it fit in my bag? Anything. Then I thought about it. Well, that's just it. It had to be a static stationary item. It wouldn't be anything I can have for mobility or portability. It had to be something like I keep in the kitchen on the counter somewhere or at a desk or so? probably take a point of sales. Yeah, I don't see how I would be able to uh, transport this foldable, um, this portable, you know, foldable laptop. 
Well, not non portable, uh, port- non portable foldable laptop. How could I take this with me? I mean, I see the flexible screen, but uh, do the screen? So think about it. If you look at the tablet and the keyboard, mm-hmm. that's probably three inches by itself. Mm-hmm. The screen size probably giving you six inches or, or more in, in length. And then I see that it has some type of um, malleable type of bend. But is it malleable enough to bend enough me to stick inside of my backpack or to stick inside of my portfolio bag? That's why I was saying is this is foldable isn't in a sense to be portable or get me offer me mobility. I don't know. So this is how, kind of how I look at this. Right. When I when I look at this device, what I see is a better version of the Microsoft Surface Book. Boom. Okay. That's what I see. What I see is Microsoft saying, OK, now we have. We we have we we're deciding because the technology has been there for foldable displays, right? Okay. Technology is there. Okay, it's just the cost and make you know how do you power it and what's the form factor? I think that's where the problem is. We've got the technology to do this design right right now today. Okay, seamless, make it bend without breaking, no problem. I think that's here. Um, when I look at it in its bended form, right? When I see that. That makes me think of, and for those that are watching, we're going to put this up for you. When I look at it in this bended form, you see these images. Uh, people were were taking a, taking photos of it at a at a press conference. Um, to me, just like any other notebook, just like the Surface Book, you just slide that right into your laptop sleeve, and you're good to go. You mm. you put that whole device just like in any other courier bag or anything else. I don't see it outside of the norm as far as how you transport it. Um, what, what I do see and looking at its size, I see that something like this start to fight into the converged space between tablet and between laptop, right? You know, the big thing right now is, you know, you've got a tablet. We talked about this last week. It's funny how everything's going back to last week. We talked about iOS 11, right? And this, and making your iPad so similar to your laptop functionality on iOS versus Mac OS that one might argue that I've got enough w- of what I need from a software perspective that this tablet does my due diligence on a daily basis. And if so, now I don't need a laptop. Mm-hmm. Well, now Lenovo is saying I can give you the form factor possibly, or, or when I say form factor, or let me say this, the portability or the size of a tablet and but it's really a full laptop full hard keyboard not a soft detachable keyboard so you're getting the things that people who use a laptop will love it it, it can sit in your lap like a true laptop fold down and be thin like a tablet uh, to some degree and, and still have the you know the weight in which you know what you would expect from a tablet so i'm 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 with this i like it a lot and to me, that's this is what I see as the next evolution of laptops. This is what I see mm-hmm. as the next form factor because we don't need the regular hinges anymore. Okay, that's really what it is. We don't need the hinges. That is it's unnecessary. Not if I can get more screen real estate. I guess so. Um, well, this is a prototype uh, that they demoed at the conference um, a week or so ago in New York City. And I mean, it looks nice. To me, what's impressive is not only that it's foldable in a sense, it's not all the way completely malleable where you can just fold a screen and, cr- and you know, it is some plastic sure. and it's rigid and it's, it's going to, it'll crunch. You hit a crunch noise and smash it if you do that. But um, how they was able to get all these components in there with that thing? Because uh, I see on the side to the, on the left of the picture, if you put it back up, they showing you when it's folded down. And I was like, wait a minute, that's nice. Mm-hmm. You know, you see the side. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's that's really nice. So, I, I guess yeah, you could just have a unique little case thing. But the outside outer ma- shell of the material, the like, is kind of enough designed to be weatherproof to me already. So this is sitting on something here um, that I like to see what the Novo is doing and um, with this uh, foldable laptop, man. And okay, well, you could see any more applications because I've just really noticed on the side now, on the left, that is actually it. It just folds it down. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that's, it. That's, that's it. That's it. That's yeah. all it is. All right. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm with it. I think that I think that Lenovo may be, and obviously, you know, a concept, but who knows? Who knows where something like this is going to head? They, they, and they're very vague. Oh, my God. <sighs> yeah, they're so they vague. Yeah. Talking about 
uh, they're going to achieve this with advanced materials and, and new screen technologies down here at the bottom. Right. Um, which is, oh, is, is, is is rudimentary vague <laughs> and if i scroll back up if you see this you know it's not very much thicker than a, a, a an ipad of today you know right so i think we've got batteries we can get battery sizes down to where they're small enough for some something like this to fit we can get components uh process you know snapdragon processors in these devices that yeah. are run you know that that are run off a of great architecture we could probably put in some 64-bit architecture mm -hmm. in a small enough footprint that'll give us what we need here um it's just getting the price down that's right. the biggest thing right is is making it affordable it's like you can create these great technologies you can bring stuff like this to the world you know and which which look beautiful but the problem then comes is if you don't have if you can't if someone can't afford it then what then what are y'all doing you right know, and, so it is what it is right and you have to know your audience and you have to know who who is this is niche of people who will purchase this would be just a business or consumer yep. and speaking of getting to know your audience a lot of that is by doing polling and doing marketing and advertising uh, to get feedback on your products that you present to people and that's what we do here at the sphere um, this, this portion of the show is sponsored by the sphere are you starting a business and looking for a place to advertise do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at the Spear. We offer a wide variety of content delivered pla delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. We everywhere. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at error code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the TV. Boom. There it is, man. There it is. So in, in, in even though that's conceptually speaking, right? Yes. Lenovo is obviously doing some other things um that we I, how do i say uh they're trying to continue to move into these spaces uh where we talk about vr we talk about ar and you know looking at what they what they've put out in the news recently and not just the conceptualization con the concept stuff but talking about some of their desktops like their like their uh think center the m91 uh 910t receiving oculus ready certification i mean to me this is another one of the, the another one of those things where i get excited for a company like lenovo yes um, because i'm looking forward to seeing where they where they move forward i'm looking forward to seeing what things they bring to the table um because they have been quiet i think you you started off that conversation like we, you mm -hmm. know they don't do a lot of marketing they don't like advertising um but if they're going to build a or or put out let's say the desktop that's going to handle oculus you know, would you would you argue that Lenovo might be some degree? How do I say a bit too late? Walk with me on this when I okay. say that, right? Okay. So right now, you go into a Best Buy. We talked about Best Buy earlier. You go into anywhere and you see the you see the Oculus set up and you see a PC that has got to be connected to or whatnot. But we've also seen we've also talked about here on the show about vr going being untethered right because that's the the best vr if you're going to do vr versus ar the best vr is to be able to function in a room where the vr headset is aware of your limitations right or you're completely immersed where your whole body feels as though you're in something we haven't even talked about full mm -hmm. immersion yet we read about that in the science fiction books where you get into this right this coffin quote unquote or you get into these this device that then puts your whole perception of life into a virtual reality space that way then you're not confined by a room or anything you think you're walking when your body is literally laying down mm -hmm. so that full immersion but lenovo saying that they they're going to unveil or, or that that they've got this oculus ready think center what does that then mean you know that being almost two thousand dollars when we're talking about moving vr to a place that doesn't revolve around wires that, that has no cables 
So are they behind the scenes on this? Are we already past a point to where we don't even want uh, devices that are tethered? I mean, how do you feel about that? Okay. Well, I, I think about it says one of the, I think it's just the, the Oculus Rift functionality being supported straight out of the box and compatibility is just another enhanced feature mm. to feature their new um, Think Center um, desktop. This is a gaming desktop, but it's also for those who are in the computer science or doing the software development, software engineering, that it not only will render to the new, newly established standards of how VR should work and comply with other type of hardware and software, but also it works in a way for developers to be able to make new content. So they give you i7 processor, they give you some other types of things there and other type of electronic components to, to ensure you get the best experience you need, not only to leverage and play uh, VR um, games and, and for entertainment, but also as a software engineer, you can develop VR content for under $2,000. And I thought the timing of this is very interesting, the co the, which coincided around the same time at the Apple conference, World War Developers Conference, in 2017, we just had recently, uh, earlier this month, mm -hmm. when they announced the iMac Pro. Um, because we know that thing going to get up, that server device is going to get up to ten, upwards of 10,000 plus easily mm -hmm. if you max it out. But to say, hey, I have this device here, they give you everything you need and some of the high-end chipsets for under 2K. And it's not just for your entertainment, but it's maintaining a standard to where you can actually uh, monetize it in a sense to put in your lab at school academic and teach people software engineer or to have inside your production lab to make software to leverage the uh, Oculus Rift devices. So uh, from that standpoint, I think it's, it's interesting that Lenovo um, is utilizing this and they see an area to get in this, in this niche space here for people who want an ultimate game and desktop and for those also who want to use the same game and desktop to be able to create new uh, VR experience content. Now, this is the deal. Um, Alienware, which went downward to me, uh, went, I think, out of Sacramento, California, when Dell acquired them some time ago. Wow. But, but, mm -hmm. but Alienware is making a balance. And Alienware, you gamers know, had the alien technology inside of their laptops mm -hmm. that it took everyone else three to four years to get. Uh, you know, that you would see. So, and they had laptops that was running, uh, rivaling some of the power for desktops. Uh, but now they have, Dell has Alienware desktops and Alienware laptops. But nowhere near this price point uh, for what Lenovo is offering and, and standardizing for is their chipset. So, I think this is interesting, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping that th it does more than just say, hey, we can paddle with Oculus Rift. Uh, because, as you touched on, um, Oculus Rift is in VR is going to the point to where it requires no wires and no devices to be ha uh, held in the hand. So as you see on these pictures here uh, with the Vive, uh, the Novo is just is just doing it, bro. They are just doing it. And, I mean, that looks amazing right there, uh, that Vive system, uh, because now you're seeing them really show that, hey, our technology uh, – I think I had to come up with a better name in a sense, but our technology is really uh, cutting edge and innovative because if you look at the ThinkPad and iPads and the yoga, man, that yoga pad, I don't know if you've seen that latest one, the yoga pad, it's the most beautiful pad that's out there. To me, pads, anything Samsung has or Apple, um, but you know, you, you can you can also can use the Windows software or operating system or the Android software uh, operating system. But, Lenovo as a whole, man, has so many great things going on, and we didn't even talk about their phones. <laughs> yeah, the, the, well, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people don't even realize they have phones. Yeah, so, yes, yes. Uh, that's, yes. that's just what it is. Yes. And, and the, for the, for those that are watching right now, the image that I put up, uh, that's of the the competitor um, from Alienware uh, that Dell owns. And obviously, they work with both uh, Oculus and Vive. Um, and I think that getting into that space, I think it makes sense from a business perspective, right? I think that it makes sense from a, from a monetization perspective because there are, there aren't a lot of companies mm -hmm. that are focused there. And I wouldn't expect Lenovo to get focused there because they, that's not something they've ever been and not something they ever did. Mm -hmm. However, what I would say is that 
moving forward, what I want from a company like a Lenovo or any company that wants to hop into the space is, is make sure that you're not following the leaders per se, but you're trying to lead the pack. And that's why I talk about the being untethered versus tethered, right? Obviously, you need the firepower to get what you to get the VR experience as of today. But you but show me some concepts for untethered VR. Show me some concepts for full immersion that takes that utilizes some other things, maybe even puts our bodies in a particular space. So that that's what I that's what I want to see. And mm-hmm. I do understand that it's not going to necessarily be cheap. You know, it's the opportunity to do that is is, is going to be an expensive one. Um, but that takes us to that next level. And that's how you really start to cement your name, um, not just a foldable laptop, but show me some some true immersion technology um, when it comes to VR, the spaces where people are going to head to. So that's how I feel. Um being that I, I did mention that there's a cost associated, <laughs> we want to give a shout out to one of our other advertisers on the show, and that's Houston Housewives of Finance. So, did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 millions of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month, and 39% of adults say they don't have enough money in savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy today. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance at one 700 4463 or email them at info at Houston Housewives of Finance.com. Access how you can participate in a complimentary personal financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. I almost want to say technology right there. <laughs> Give them the new faces and the new age of technology, but, with the, but they're not the new age of technology. Just finance, just finance. Yes. But I do have some new technology. And a little surprise oh, for those that can see, it has a number five on it because this is the one plus one five. Uh-oh. So um, I haven't, I, ha- I, I haven't uh, installed anything on it yet. Um, I got it a couple of days ago. Came in on I think on the 29th. night, um, and has some nice little box stuff and and whatnot. Comes really, uh, really cool, neat, um, wrapped really well. Feels good. Um, Reminds a lot of people of an iPhone. Uh, that's what I've heard. And I, I'm, I would probably say, yeah, yeah, there's some similarities there. But all devices have a very similar shape now. I mean, yeah, my, my, my current Nexus 6P uh, looks very similar, except for the fact that the fingerprint reader is on the back, then, the, then this OnePlus 5 with the fingerprint reader on the front. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm I'm okay with either device. Uh, I, my, I'm upgrading because my battery isn't lasting as long anymore on my Nexus 6P. So I may get a half a day and it's out of there. Oh, wow. Uh, which yeah. sucks. Yeah. yeah. But this thing has 8 gigs of RAM. Man. Yeah. 8 gigs of RAM <laughs> in this thing, man, with the, with the new Snapdragon 835. 8 gigs of RAM, oh, 128 gigs of storage. But 8 gigs of RAM, that's crazy in a cell phone. Uh, we say that now, and five years from now, eight <laughs> gigs will be the de facto norm, and your phones will have 32 gigs, probably 64 gigs, uh, doing all kind of crazy AR, VR stuff. But uh, I'm excited for the device. I'm excited to get it installed. Like I said, no, nothing on it yet. It's still clean. I was trying to decide whether I was going to root the device mm-hmm. or leave <laughs> it stock and un- don't unlock the bootloader. Just in- you know, go ahead and move forward to install. But I think I am going to root it and un- you know, unlock the bootloader because once you unlock bootloader, it wipes the device. Yes. So you don't want to install stuff, then decide you want to root it, unlock the bootloader, <laughs> wipe all your stuff you just did, <laughs> yeah. and have to start over from scratch. So you got to make the decision when you first get the device. So I think I am going to uh, spend some time doing that so I can get it up and popping. But just want to give the technocrats out there, the fans of the show, uh, a look. We will do a full review on the OnePlus 5 pretty soon. Um, but it is in-house, and we're ready to rock and roll with that. Jay, my man, I appreciate the show today. 
Had yes. a great time with you. Great concepts. Talking about a lot of interesting things that are going to shape our technology moving forward, my man. Yeah, likewise. Indeed. So where, do pe- where can the people reach you at, bro? Yeah, y'all can hit me up on Twitter and Instagram, AstroTesla80, or email me at jdavis at astrotesla.com. That's what's up. And, of course, you can reach me anywhere online, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, Snapchat, a few other places that I won't mention on this show. <laughs> <laughs> at G Hawkins. That's G Hawkins with the Z. It's been another great episode of Technocrats. We will see you all next time. Take care. Bye.